Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for all your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, why not click on that button and ring the bell so you can get notifications of whenever I'm dropping content on the channel. And now onto the topic of this video. And this one is about hero combo classification. So we're all desperate to see what combinations of heroes work best. There are so many different common lists going around uh, made by other great content providers um, that I've used myself in the past, but often we've struggled to actually classify what these combos are and how they're different from each other, apart from, say, um, some of the combos like the Beast Queen combo, which I've always called like a basic attack combo. Now, uh, in the past couple of days, the one of my contact at the devs has actually given me information specifically on this topic so uh, i'm going to go through the six different classifications of combos and i'm going to give some um a, a, like examples of each one most of these examples have actually come from the devs themselves um i've added in a couple of my my own uh, and the ones that i've added in have got my uh, logo next to them so uh, first off uh, let's have a look at status team so status team applies poisoning or bleeding status to the enemy together with damage bonus damage mitigation and healing weakening effects countering the cavalry skill team and footman healer teams that we're going to see in a bit so examples of the status team are army breaker poison blisterous poison healer blisterous or army poison lust of course having seen um Belisarus's skills he require he does inflict bleeding on the opponent it's a new type of status and he will require a hero that does either poisoning or bleeding um, to increase the the damage that he does uh, there aren't that many heroes that do poison um, poison master is the most obvious lust also has a pretty good poison skill um, other than that like desert storm does it but his is only comes in in the fifth round and it's very very small amounts of damage but it would guarantee it to all three um squads in your opponent's legion so this is the status team it doesn't really um talk about fire damage either um there are some heroes that do fire damage which might be you could have included as well um for instance um fire damage you're looking at like scarlet reaver hunk those kind of heroes um so you might want to kind of include them in that classification as well on to the next classified group and this is cavalry skill team um something that we've seen a lot of in the game so this is a high combat speed uh with the skill to stay sober so guess what all of these um, examples have got avalanche in it because she is one of the only heroes that uh, well, she is the only cavalry hero that has hope that's over. Um, able to increase the chance to cast skills and to be the first to deal critical skill damage. Countering, confusing team and footmen, counterattack team. So, as it says, um, you know, immune to um, countering effects. So, cavalry skill team has to have av avalanche in. It's another example of why avalanche is uh, one of the absolute key heroes in the game. Uh, high combat speed, that's coming from both uh, Lawman and El Cid. Uh, Lawman gives an extra 120 combat speed. El Cid gives an extra 100 combat speed on their sixth skill. So that's going to be valuable. And it means that they can start first each time in the battle round. So where do we see... I mean, quite often we are seeing these kind of health, Hellfire, Warhammer, Avalanche combos um, in the current seasons, like 10, 11, 12. Uh, pre that, like in earlier parts of the game, you might see Lawman with uh, Army Breaker Avalanche, you know, in SX2, SX3. So these kind of combo, and then of course, Lawman, Warhammer, Avalanche as well. So basically the heroes in this group, um, it's only like four or five different heroes that you're gonna see really, as we can see, uh, and they're, they're in just kind of mixed in different combinations. On to the next group is Cyril Attack Team. Now this is probably one of the most common uh, that you have seen in the game. We see it from a very early stage in the game as well. And these are launching continuous normal attacks 
additional attacks and splash attacks to deal critical physical damage in the first few rounds, countering cavalry skill team and status team because they are trying to get all of their damage out at the start of the battle and these are the kind of combos that you want to use against uh, poison tiles because you want to kill all of the tile guardians as quickly as possible and in the earlier stages of the game as well often these combinations are you know the OP meta combos we all know uh, Beast Queen, Rosen, Immortal is very strong in the game until we start seeing like Norman, Army Breaker, Avalanche um, in SX2 so what kind of combos can we see here well we've got Rosen, Warden, uh, Rainforest Ranger. Of course, Warden is giving both Rosen and Rain, uh, Warden give the extra basic attacks, potentially up to th three in that combination in the first three rounds. And uh, you're going to then see, obviously, these back row heroes. Most of them have passive skills that are triggered by basic attacks, uh, which is what the additional attacks that you see in the description above. Farah, Rosen, Ranger. Beast Queen, Rosen, Ranger, and then we've got Rosen, Warden, Immortal, Farah, Rosen, Immortal, the most common combo we've seen, Beast Queen, Rosen, Immortal, of course, Beast Queen does have the splash attacks, and then also the devs put in Sakura, Warden, Spectral Reaper, because Sakura gives all of that extra damage in the early stages of the game, and Spectral Reaper is also this kind of um, serial attack hero, as we can now call him because Warden, he has um, passive skills and Warden is going to give him an extra basic attack to try and trigger those. And one that I've added in that we're seeing a lot as well, uh, which is Rosen, Reaper, Sakura. Again, lots of extra damage. Rosen gives that possibility for additional attacks in the early rounds. And uh, we're seeing this has been reasonably, well, this is used quite a lot as well. So quite a few different combos on the serial attack team and um, I'm pretty confident most people will be aware of how those work. So on to the th uh, fourth, fifth and sixth teams as they're being described by the healers. This is, this is their classification and wording, not mine. Uh, so Footman Healer Team protects the major damage dealer through healing and damage mitigation effects, deals additional damage when attacked and outperforms others in the final stages of the battle, countering the Footman Counterattack Team and Cavalry Skill Team. Uh, the most obvious hero that is going to do most of this is Arthur, so paired with healers, as we can see from the examples that the devs have given us. So Arthur Scander Hellfire, Arthur Scander Bleeding, Arthur Hellfire Healer, Arthur Scander Fortune Teller, and then uh, one that I've put in because obviously I appreciate that um, Arthur is a premium hero that you only um, pay to win players could have got so I've actually included in the SX12 hero Pepin um, because I guess he's the most similar kind of hero um, where he is actually doing well he's the, his idea is that he should be outperforming the opponent in the latter stages of the game because his eighth skill should be triggering um, his second skill more often for the second half of the battle and I've paired him with Skander and Scarlet Reaver because with Pepin, his fifth skill requires uh, footman heroes and requires them the heroes that do um, combat skills. So that's why I've put him in there in that combo. So um, Arthur, of course, his second skill, the more he takes damage, it stacks it 16 times, uh, gives him a lot of 160% uh, extra damage. And of course, he has on his eighth skill, it boosts the um, healing potential um, when healing is done on him by other heroes. So that's why you're seeing Scander, Hellfire, Bleeding and Healer in there, because they're kind of basically the four main healers in the game that are going to protect um, protect him on the front row. And it's the same for Pepin as well. Pepin actually has extra HP and extra resist, uh, extra HP on his sixth skill, giving extra resistance on the seventh skill as well. So he is quite a tanky hero. You could put him on the front row. Um, so that is Footman Healer Team. Fifth set is Footman Counterattack Team. So these guys are going to deal damage to the enemy when attacked, supports the team through healing and damage mitigation effects, uh, a team with stable performance, countering the status team and confusing team. We are seeing this first combo um, in the newer states who are taking part in SX11, SX12, Aslan, Reaver, Healer, that is one of the best uh, combos right now. And you can also go with Arslan Bleeding, 
Reaver or Auslan Bleeding Warhammer, interestingly, they've sent. These are all the devs combinations. Um, so yeah, there's just, again, you're seeing um, some healers in each, um, each of these combinations. They do seem to be very stable generally. Um, any combination that's got Warhammer and Bleeding Steed in, um, you know, Bleeding Steed gives a lot of confusion, gives a lot of healing. Warhammer is doing that um, healing mitigation, uh, healing reduction on the opponent. Um, so they're very consistent heroes. But only for footmen. It's interesting they've done t um, several, they haven't actually done a combination specifically for archers because the sixth group is confusing team so confusing team is going to confuse the enemy to increase the damage it takes Egypt queen confuses the team that launches multiple attacks and lust angel deals critical damage against the confused enemy the team counters the serial attack team um, now this obviously there are quite a few heroes that have confusion in their skill set and um, as we can see from this combo, the most obvious combo is Ragnar, Cleo, Lust. Um, that's certainly what I've been running when I do run uh, with Cleo. Uh, because of the level of confusion, you get uh, you get guaranteed confusion on turns 4 and 5 with Ragnar. And his fifth skill gives that 70% extra damage to the opponents who are confused. Lust also gives a high level of confusion and extra damage to confused um, enemies. And then obviously Cleo's fifth skill is doing all that confusion as well. Hunk, he does a high level of confusion, um, so you can pop in him in instead of Ragnar, uh, like so if you're in earlier stages of the game, because uh, Hunk is SX1 and Ragnar is SX4. Or, of course, uh, well, what am I saying? <laughs> that combo's got lust in, but maybe you could, for instance, potentially do, um, you could go Hunk, uh, Cleo, Bleeding, actually, if you're only in SX1. And then... Uh, they've also included bleeding because again his fifth skill gives 50 percent chance for confusion uh, with cleo and lust and then finally they've put in cleo poison lust the two combos that i've added in are bleeding ragnar lust and then uh, brave ragnar lust because again uh, even though brave doesn't do confusion this is the kind of combo that you're seeing um, because obviously it's all around Ragnar, um, Ragnar's fifth skill, which does that extra damage for opponents that are um, in kind of all of those different status effects. So um, that's kind of little cheat that I've put Brave in there because he's not specifically um, doing that. But it, this is a very common, this is a reasonably common combo that we've seen as well. It can be effective, and these are these guys are basically countering the serial attack team because. This, obviously the serial attack team are going to do a lot of actual attacks so if you do confuse them um, you have more chance because when you do when an opponent is confused it's not guaranteed that they'll hit themselves but if that opponent is is actually attacking more then there's more chance for them to hit themselves and, and damage themselves which makes sense of why confusing would counter a serial, serial attack team so there we go those are the six different classifications and here is just again a quick uh, summary of who counters what so status team counters cavalry skill and footman healer team cavalry skill team counters confusing team and footman counter attack team serial attack counters cavalry skill and status and footman healer counters the footman counter attack and cavalry skill and then footman counter attack cut counters status team and confusing and confusing counters serial attack so Interesting that the devs, after all this time, have finally given out this kind of information. And I wanted just, I know, sorry, the, the kind of uh, display is pretty basic. You know, I'm always trying to go for more actual uh, detail in the content rather than the kind of way that I show it. But it is interesting that the devs have finally kind of actually shown how they're classifying heroes. And I guess that kind of gives us an idea of the framework that they're working, that they are working around when they produce a hero for Rise of Empires. They're wanting that hero to fit into one of those six classifications effectively. Um, you know, you see other elements of that in earlier stages of the game. Um, Soaring Hawk, is it Soaring Hawk? SX, um, S4 hero, you know, I think he would be an earlier version of like a, a counter attack because he does have 
Uh, where is it? Here we go. He does have this counter-attack skill on skill 5, for instance. At this later stage in the game, uh, those kind of skills are pretty weak, to be honest with you. Um, but it's just an example that he does fit into that framework. And I guess if we look at a lot of the heroes in the game, they probably would fit into... Uh, the majority of them will fit into the framework of those six different groups. So I hope um, you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And um, if you have, of course, please do click on that like. I would be interested to hear your comments on the way that they, the devs have classified uh, the different uh, the different kind of groups and combos. Um, are you kind of surprised by the classifications? Do you think they're missing anything potentially? Um, I certainly think, for instance, that there could have been a bit more uh, some some of these skill effects could have been the status effect could have been expanded a little bit uh, like I say to maybe include burning also what about um, the hero combos that do a lot of silencing or disarming so you know in earlier parts of the game we saw a lot of people running with uh, brave army breaker avalanche for instance was quite a common combo um, even if you think about Roku Roku's doing a lot of silencing as well and, and we saw people running with even say Warlord Roku Avalanche so there's a few different versions that you could have maybe expanded on or maybe as I've just said it is just an example that you can actually probably fit a lot of those combinations within the framework of those six main groups so yeah pop your comments in the comment section down below guys and of course if you please share this video and my channel in your alliance chat province chat and through line whatsapp viber discord whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game that would be very much appreciated thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon